Hi guys, welcome to uh, the first lesson of the uh, of the new year, 2012. Hope you all had a good Christmas. Uh, Happy New Year to you all. Um, the members are the members are growing massively at the minute, so which is uh, which is just fantastic news. So thank you for all your support on this. Um, this is the first lesson that we've done that's completely and utterly free of charge. Uh, as you know, we've been charging for them before, but I realised that that's not what I wanted to do. What I wanted to get <coughs> good quality education out. Um, to the majority of drummers and then you know on the back side of things we'll get we'll get some other people to pay for the upkeep of the site and things so that's the way that things are going to work so you guys don't need to worry about that at all okay so again you know thank you spread the word for me um let's make this grow into a real big sort of online community and let's make it let's make it a really big thing okay so a little bit of housekeeping for those who've not been on before um right inside your screen your video screen you'll see um the bit where you can send your questions in Questions are going to come straight through to me. Um, we'll answer them during and in and amongst things, um, and towards the end. The lessons are normally about between sort of twenty to twenty-five minutes of, of actual kind of teaching time, and then depending on questions and things. So there can be as short as twenty minutes if there's you know if there's people just wanted to watch them in the archives, or there can be as long. I think that we've had you know almost an hour at one point. Okay, so um, so let's crack on tonight. We're going to talk about. Um, Something which I teach to a lot of my students um, here in the studio in, in, up in West Yorkshire and then oh, you know, around the world online or with Skype lessons. Okay? And this is a, a kind of concept that I really want you to think about the next time you sit at your drums. Okay? This is going to be purely, um, purely a lot of talking and, 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 a, and a pad lesson. I've got the, um, I've got the Jebeki. Um, the Jebeki snare here, which obviously is not plugged in, it's just been used as a pad. Yeah, uh, you'll see from the archives that we do do full kit lessons and things, but this one's an important one because I just want to get a concept across to you. Okay, so as I say, questions in, uh, we'll answer them throughout, and they can be about anything. If you've got something specific, uh, we might come back to that and try and answer it in a different lesson. Um, but you know, that's how things work. All right, so let's crack on. The two words I wanted to really think about are what and how okay sounds really easy and really simple yeah the two words you're thinking about is what and how okay and i'm going to go into more detail about that i spend the majority of my time teaching one of these words to people okay um, <laughs> and over the last probably you know eight nine years um uh, and when i when i first met dom familiar and started studying with dom um, he's never really taught me anything in terms of licks and things. He's taught me how to play them efficiently, which changed my world altogether. I thought I was a good player before, and it's just not the case. It wasn't the case at all. Eh? The, the, the two words are two completely separate things, and each focused on one of them, and that's what I'm going to get you guys to do. Okay. So the first word is what. Yeah. So what is, is, quite, is quite an easy thing, really. It is... It's what we play, yeah. That's it's as easy as that. It's what we play, okay. There's no more to it than that. I don't want you to think any deeper than that. I just want you to think about what, okay. So let's take an example of it, all right? Um, <coughs> let's say what we're going to play, paradiddles, okay. Again, these lessons are right from sort of very beginner you know up through to advance you can take away what you want from it i don't want to do like other people do which is well this is an advanced lesson this is an intermediate one people can take away from these whatever they want to take away whichever level you're at there should be something in there for all of you okay so let's look at the paradiddle okay we all know hopefully what the paradiddle is but if we're, if we're a real beginner it's right left right single paradiddle for that right left right right left right left right okay so that is what we're playing okay <laughs> so if you want to write this down what we're playing yeah, what and how two columns what is paradiddle and then we'll approach the how okay we cannot and this is this i can't state this enough we cannot play everything 
in the same way. Okay? We have to think about different techniques, we have to think about different motions. We cannot play everything in the same way. Yeah? That is one thing that I really want you to think about the next time you sit at your kit or at your practice pad. We cannot play things the same way. Okay? Imagine that you're, you're a householder, I don't know how old some of you are, yeah? you've got your house, you're having a new kitchen fitted, the guy turns up, your kitchen turns up and the guy fit, turns up to fit it and he's got, uh, he's got a spanner in his hand. He's got no van, he's got no van of tools or toolboxes, he's got a spanner. You'd soon kick him out the door and go, I don't think you're really up to the job, you've not got the tools of the trade to do a good job in fitting this kitchen for me. And that's exactly the same thing now. Most people, most drummers that I see, come in here, <laughs> there's a say online, and they come in and they try and play everything in the same way. Which is just, yeah, in a way, if you worked at it enough, it will probably work. Okay? But nine times out of ten, it's not. You need to work efficiently and get things to flow. Okay? <laughs> so let me show you an example of that. If I was going to play what the Prada did, and this is how I'm going to play it, okay? I'm going to play it using uh, a kind of American grip, yeah? But there's, there's lessons um, online in the archives about these grips and things, but we will go into more detail of these in the following weeks. This is kind of the starter, and then we're going to fill in the gaps in the next four weeks or so, and it's purely about developing these hands, okay? So I'm going to start in, in, a, in a sort of American grip, and I'm going to use a wrist motion. I'm going to use the free stroke, which is letting the stick come back. Yeah, like bouncing a ball. <laughs> I'm going to play them quite full, quite full strokes. See how loose the sticks are? the index finger is not really doing anything at all. If, that hand, if you hang your hand, the index finger stays there. Put the stick in, the index finger stays exactly where it was, making the fulcrum back here. Okay, I hope you can see that. Fulcrum's on the, on the sort of middle finger now. Yeah? Giving the stick much more space to be able to move. Okay? If you have your index finger tucked up underneath, then that's going to stop the stick from moving. Okay. Also, it tenses up this muscle, and if you look up here, really, really tenses up this muscle. Okay, so you might, you, hopefully, you can see that. Um, try and get a bit nearer the camera for that; you'll probably be able to see that. Yeah. Okay. If I come to here, <coughs> and I and I squeeze my index finger under, see these muscles moving, moving in the arm, really tensing up there. You know, this is now. You know, rock hard, yeah, relax it, nice and soft again, okay? So it's really important that we get a, new, a neutral point to start from. We get that really, you know, we get that really neutral point to start from, okay? Which is staying nice and relaxed. And again, <laughs> letting the sticks and the drums or the sticks and the pad or whatever it is do the work, okay? So <laughs> there we are, we're in this loose grip, moving our wrists, kind of in an American grip. Fine, that works great. Yeah, we can get a certain speed there. Before we start to kind of lose it a little bit and it starts to go a little bit. Okay? So <laughs> what we need to do now is now we've got now we've hit that kind of block. We need to think about how we're playing this and what's the most efficient way to get this to work when it gets to speed. Okay? So rather than going from the free stroke and a, a formal motion, a wrist motion, what we'll do is we'll start to move into an informal motion, an arm motion, or more to the point, the molar technique. Okay, so again, we're going to cover the molar in more detail in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, but the molar technique being that the stick moves this way. Okay. 
much more efficient way to play certain things. Yeah, it's not a be all and end all again. It's another tool for the job. Yeah, it's another tool in our toolbox. Okay, that's the mo that's the molar whip. Yeah, and that's the molar stroke. Okay, so <laughs> it makes a big difference to how we play it. All right. So if I go from the free stroke. Playing it. This is how we're playing it. We're playing with the wrist motion. And we're nice and loose. Nice and loose. And I start to now think about putting in the roller. Now that's really, really easy. It really flows. Nice boy motion. And it just makes things much more efficient and much nicer. Okay? Now we can really start to push the tempo. And we'll notice that we still we're at a re, we're at quite a fast tempo there, but we've still got a big motion, which means that when we get faster, we can get lower and the speed will increase because the distance from the drum head is less. Okay? It takes less time to get from here than it does to get from here. Okay, it's that slow. If I move my wrist in the same way, keep that moving, yeah, same time, roughly about the same time, and then move it to a low stroke. It's automatically faster. That's wrist motion, there's no fingers. Yeah? automatically faster because the distance is less. Okay, basic science really. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Keep moving the same but bring, bring your sticks up. Get slow. Yeah. Okay. So again, it's it's a, it's a it's an obvious thing of how we play it. Yeah. If we've got a really fast pattern, yeah, we're not going to be able to play it from here. Because the depth of time that it takes to get from there to there it's too great. Okay, so we have to get, we have to play, then we have to say, right, okay, well, let's play, we're going to play it low. Yeah, that's not necessarily quiet, but we need to play in lower strokes because it's a faster piece. Okay, so these are the basics of the how thing, yeah. So, as I said before, <coughs> in the molar, the basics of a molar triplet, which again we'll cover, is a, is a, is a triplet which is down, tap, Yeah, down tap up. Yeah, again, really lose the finger off. Okay. <laughs> if we take that little triplet and we go after the downstroke, if we put a little grace knot in. Just alter the feel of it slightly, we've got the paradiddle. So this is one motion. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. We've got three notes out of that one motion. So now we had the left hand, so now we've got we've played a full paradiddle and we've only moved twice. Okay, that's all we've done. Hence, this is why it's more efficient, okay? Same left handed. Yeah, so we're putting in half the effort, we're making, we're playing four notes in a paradiddle, moving twice, half the effort. So in theory, you can go double the speed. What I'll do is I'll play this, I'll take it in. Try and switch back to the way I was playing before, which is from the wrist, and we'll see if, it, see if we can keep it going. At this side, very difficult, very difficult, and they become quite untidy. Okay, so the first idea behind how is to really think about which motion which technique you're going to use.
Okay? <laughs> That's the key. That's the key. Okay, let's just see if everybody's keeping up with that so far. Let's see if we've got any questions. Okay. Uh, <laughs> few. Just come. I'll just go back a little bit. It's just it's just joined in uh, a little bit in, yeah. Okay. Um, it's just asking a question there about um, in terms of. Sorry, I've got a few quite a lot of questions in here actually. Um, about the fulcrum. Okay. <laughs> let me just let me go back a little bit for you there. If that hand naturally falls there, okay, then if you put your stick in. Really, you need to keep that in a natural position for it to move properly. Okay. Now, if that finger's under here, the index finger's under, which is, to be honest, where I was taught to do that, yeah, and where where, where most of you will have been taught to do it, yeah. If you watch a lot of the top players, the you know, I mean, I've seen quite a lot of Tony Royster playing like this, yeah. This index finger's hanging off the stick, yeah. It's hanging off the stick, yeah, because there's much more room for the stick to move here and pivot there. Than there is if the index finger is under because the finger actually stops the stick from moving. Okay, so for what I would say to you for general everyday playing, yeah, we got for the nice little back beat, letting it bounce back off. Yeah, we got this stick and it's really loose and it's just sort of it's in there and this index finger is not doing a great deal. Yeah, okay. Moving on to let's that's a good question. Let's let's move that on a step. Okay, it's not. Again, it's not the be all and end all of playing, yeah? <laughs> Depends on, again, what you're playing, okay? So let's say that we are, let's say that we've, we've, got, a, a, we've got a nice shuffle to play, okay? Yeah? So let's say we're playing a nice shuffle, yeah? Uh, a slower tempo, again, let's, let's, sorry, let's just go back, yeah? The what is the shuffle, okay? How, okay? It, do we approach the shuffle in the same way that we approach playing a basic eighth note rock group, yeah? Which is really loose. Yeah, probably, you know, for me, if I was playing that on the high, that would be in kind of approaching French grip over here. Yeah, and this is index finger off. It's a, a nice uh, formal motion from the wrist. Yeah. But yeah, again, even in sort of French grip, you can see the index fingers off because everything's really loose. Yeah. Do we approach the shuffle the same way? Depends on, let's look at the speed of the shuffle. Okay, so let's say now in the what section we're playing a slow shuffle. Yeah, dead easy. Yeah, it's dead easy. And it's because it's so slow, it's quite easy to play it in that loose, really relaxed way. Okay? Really straightforward to play like that. If that shuffle, for whatever reason, gets faster, or we've got a much faster shuffle, for example, maybe um, <laughs> uh, you know, up, up, up this tempo. Yeah, then that becomes more difficult because we need a little bit more control over the stick that's playing the shuffle. Yeah, same with both hands. We need a little bit more control over that, right? So what we do is we look at how we're playing it. So we, I'm, I'm probably going to be, depending on where you are, let's say we're playing it in, in American grip again, yeah? Which is, you know, I'll go into this in more detail later, yeah? German, French, in between those two is American, okay? So here we are in this American, here we are in the, in the American grip, yeah? <laughs> And now we play, We need to come down a little bit because it's fast, so we can't play full strokes anymore because we're not going to be able to get the speed because the time, the distance is too much. And it gets too lumpy and too horrible, yeah? So what we do is we bring the height down, yeah? So again, how? Low strokes, yeah? We need a nice bit of control when we're playing low strokes. So we have a slight little pinch just with the index finger. It doesn't come underneath, okay? But now, 
from that from being loose we have a slight pinch and it just puts a little bit of pressure on, on the back on the stick again yeah so now you've kind of got the fulcrum in these two fingers yeah but mainly it's still there yeah but then we've just got a little bit underneath there okay so there it is so that index finger going back to your question Hugh that, that index finger has come back and beat Let me explain that in another way to you. If I play, I'm going to play single strokes, yeah, and I'm going to play them from the wrist, yeah. So again, what single strokes? How? From the wrist, and I'm going to play them full, and I'm going to use the free stroke to let the stick come back. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to change. I'm going to go down to half strokes. Yeah, still possible with that loose grip. The, the key to this is that we don't change the grip. We keep the grip staying really, really loose. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that down to low. Yeah. I'm going to keep the wrist moving the same. I'm going to keep the grip the same, and I'm going to try and get that as low as I can. see that because I'm so loose now I can't actually move the sticks okay so what I need to do now is I need to have that slight little pinch now I'm saying I'm saying it's a slight pinch yeah where the index finger just comes back into play a little bit and now I've got some control back again from here yeah open it up we've got not got a great deal of control to be able to play anything that's that resembles anything that we want to hear yeah so if we put the index finger back under and just give it a little pinch, now I'm back to this sort of size again. Yeah, and I'm down back to something that now sounds okay again. And you'll see the index finger's gone back underneath, just a little bit. Not tight, it's not squeezed under, it's just touching underneath, just giving it a little bit more control. And then as we come back out again, the index finger can come back up again. Hopefully, you that's answered that, that that's answered your question. Okay, so that's the key. Yeah, is to really think about how we go about playing that stuff. So if if it's a if it's a really slow a, sorry a really slow shuffle, yeah, then we look at playing it nice and big, nice and nice and fat. But again, we're deciding on which which groove you're going to be in, uh, which which stick it a grip you're going to be in. Yeah. If if it get, if it's getting faster and getting lower, then we need that little bit more control over it, yeah. So that then we need to just imply that little pinch on the stick, yeah. Okay. It's a classic example. Another one is doubles, yeah. Um, if you're playing doubles up here, yeah, the index finger's kind of off, so everything's nice, yeah. If we want to play fast doubles down here. Yeah, we're not going to do it without without some help. Yeah, so the index finger comes back into play again. And we get that nice, clear sound again. Yeah, hopefully you can hear that around. Let's try it with the paddle so you can hear it a bit more, possibly a little bit more defined. Yeah, it's doubles. Nice and even, nice and fat. Again, it's the same in uh, traditional or match. Really loose, yeah, almost this loose. Yeah, when we come down here, just need that little pinch just to get that control. So, again, if we're playing them fast, doubles would be in the what category? Yeah, how low. German slight pinch, okay? Because you're not going to be able to play them in, say, French grip and full and loose, yeah? So it all comes down to different ways of thinking about things, yeah? Different ways of thinking about it. And that goes for, you know, it goes for anything, yeah? You're playing in, in the band or, you know, wherever you play in a studio session or <laughs> whatever it is, or, you know, some of you, I know a lot of, you, a lot of my guys are, uh, a lot of my students are teachers. Um, yeah, um, 
it comes down to you know you, you may possibly have a student who's been struggling with the same thing for for quite a number of weeks or you know even even possibly months. You keep dipping into it and coming back again. Yeah, <laughs> look at how they're doing it. Yeah, nine times out of ten, it will be something that they're doing. It's not necessary. It's not something that you've taught them wrong. It's not something that you know they're particularly stupid and they can't get it. It's just the fact that they're doing something. They're thinking about it completely wrong. Okay. That's the process that you need to go through. You need to go through the process of thinking or getting people to think differently. Think in more detail. Go in and go, right, okay, here's what you're playing. You're playing a, you're playing a, 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 a quite a fast jazz groove. Yeah. How are, we, how are you going to do it? Okay. How are you going to do it? Yeah. And that comes down to, I'll get to those other questions in a minute, uh, Hugh, Mark. Yeah? <laughs> um, that comes down to, so for example, let's, let's say you've got, I don't know, maybe maybe some kind of Latin-y kind of jazz thing, yeah? And your right hand drag pattern's going. Yeah, and they're losing time with it, yeah? One, look at how they're playing it, yeah? If they're squeezed underneath here, it's never gonna happen. It's never gonna happen in a million years. Yeah, it's gonna have to loosen up a bit. And use, use the bounce of the stick. The other thing is, how are they how are they counting it? How are you counting it when you're playing things? Yeah? Are you trying to go one and two and one and one and two? Yeah, because it's never going to happen. You're using way too much of your brain power thinking and trying to count something that you don't really need to count. You need to, you need to start thinking slower. So the faster it is, think slower. Yeah, one, two. Nobody's going to count that one. It's not going to happen because you're using all that power to try and, you know, do something that you really don't need to do. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully that's you know, that kind of makes some sense. Let's get to a couple more questions. Okay. Here we go. Uh, Mark. Is the index finger with the slight pinch known as the power stroke? <laughs> um, sorry, I'm not laughing at you, Mark. The, these. These techniques really are, they've been renamed and renamed and renamed and renamed, okay? To me, um, uh, and going back to sort of my, my Dom days, yeah, they, uh, the way to get a power stroke, really, to get power out of it is something that you're going to use to play powerfully, yeah? Okay? Now to me, that's, if you look at this, I'll put the pad back on so you can hear this a bit better. Okay. If I play quite strongly with this right hand, yeah, you can see I'm actually quite hitting that quite hard. Yeah, yeah. Now, if I want to get more power out of that, I'm just going to go to a completely different way of playing it. Yeah, I'm going to look and go, ow, this guy, this guy was running the band, this guy was producing this record or whatever it is. Yeah, this guy wants to play this. He wants it louder. Yeah. Okay. What am I going to do? I'm not going to go. And start hitting it like that, I'm just going to go, I'm simply going to change from a formal motion, which is from a wrist, to a much bigger muscle, and I'm going to go straight to the molar. Yeah? Same with both hands. Remember when you do this, not to stop it, stop it at the bottom, because that's all the shot coming up here. Yeah, but that's you can see the motion in that. It's really, really loose. Okay, so <laughs> Mark, in answer to your question, it could wait. It could well have been called the power stroke at some point. Yeah, it's not something that I particularly would call a power stroke. Yeah, I would. It, all, all you're really thinking about is getting a little bit more control there. Yeah? So whereas this is brilliant for everyday play, nice and big with the fulcrum back here. I want to play it low. And controlled, and I need a little pinch at the front of the stick. Yeah, I wouldn't particularly say that hitting the drums from there in that technique hard is difficult. is is a good thing because it's quite tense. Okay, so keeping it nice and loose, keeping it nice and relaxed, yeah, would be the way that I would say to do it. Yeah? Okay, so uh, in all honesty, Matt, I don't I don't know the answer to that. Um, it's not something that I have studied or worked on, um, but. 
in terms of getting more power, I would just go to a bigger muscle and use an informal motion and go start looking at the molar. Okay? So let me know if that's let me know if that's answered your question, mate. Hugh, I think you've got another one, mate. Yeah, okay. Uh, Hugh Wilkie, don't remember reading this out. It's, but thanks for the reply. Uh, looks like I have to move my fulcrum as I currently have my fulcrum between index and thumb for both American and French. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I would say as a base point to play a normal kind of standard, let's call it a pop drop kick. Yeah. Imagine you're on the ride. Yeah. You're in French grip. That thing, you know, it, it's there. It's just, it's just resting in the hand. It's really, really loose. Yeah. Yeah. And this hand is just plodding away here. Yeah. No tension. There's no point. There's no. There's absolutely no need to have any tension. I think you've just. I think I've just noticed there. Because obviously, I'm watching this and it's playing back over there. Yeah. It's, there's a few seconds delay. I think I've just noticed that I did something over there that's off the camera. Yeah. So this stick, this stick's playing nice and loose. Then if I want to, so if I let's say I'm playing it, I'm playing, um, I'm playing some, I'm playing some jazz. From there, I'm really loose. Yeah. The next fill I'm going to play is some quite fast Swiss triplets. From this loose, what would you know? Imagine that's over on the right, yeah. Back to the snare. I've gone from French grip, as you can see. I've come over into German. I've put the slight pinch on, yeah, just to get the stick in the right place. I've worked out the tempo, and then I've released the index finger. It's a sure way. Like in this example, to get some nice big fat flams. Yeah, let's stick. Let's stick with this for a minute, and let's see. If we're going to look at the, the, the what is going to be the, the bludgeoner. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're going to go. This, we're, 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 I'm going to dissect this into a into a, a small amount. Yeah. I'm going to play the flam, nice and open, nice and big. Index finger off. And then I'm going to have a little pinch, and I'm going to play the double. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense, guys. Yeah. Okay. So, Hugh, in, in answer to that question, in all honesty, I would again, yes, work on it. Um, work on it without the index finger there. Okay. Um, get comfortable with it. Don't change it, you know, tomorrow night on a gig because the likelihood is that you're going to start throwing sticks away. Yeah. So don't change it immediately. Okay. <laughs> Work on it in your practice time, and and then you've got the choice of going from here, you know, from from German grip with the index finger off to German grip with it on to full stroke to half stroke to low stroke into French grip. Full stroke, half stroke, low stroke, index finger on, index finger off, slight pinch, really loose, German grip, yeah? There's all these possible options, yeah? And the same goes for the foot, which I can't really demonstrate at the minute, you know? Are you going to play it, if it's quiet, are you going to play it heel down? What are you playing? Are you going to play it heel down? Are you going to play it heel up? Are you going to play it with your, with your foot? Are you going to play it with your, your, your ankle and your leg? Are you going to play it with a full leg to really pound it up? Are you going to use the little slide skip technique? Are you going to use a heel drop? Are you going to use heel toe to get some fast doubles? Yeah. We cannot, as I said right at the beginning of the lesson, we cannot do this in the same way every time. Yeah. We cannot do it in the same way every time. Yeah. It's just not. It's it, it, there's certain people out there that do play like this. Um. You know, uh, and it kind of frustrates me because it's it's all about getting getting the sticks and the drums to do the work for you, so you don't have to. Okay, 
So it's really massively important that you, that you pay attention to it. You know, most of you guys at the minute will be able to already play. Yeah, you'll be out gigging, you might be teaching, you might even be full-time pro players. I have so many pros coming here that, that can really play, but they've got no idea how to play. Yeah, which stifles that creativity. Yeah, so the creativity thing. If you can, if you can pop, if you can pop an idea in your head. Yeah. Well, I've, got, I've got an idea. What is it? All right, it's a, it's a little, let's sort of think. It's a paradiddle family thing. It's got doubles, triples, paradiddle diddles. Yeah, the facility needs to be there. So sooner or later, though, this how thing will start to become a subconscious decision that it's made, yeah? Like walking, yeah? You, no, I'm guessing not many of you need to stand up and think about walking, yeah? Yeah, if you've not had an injury or something that's made you rebuild that, yeah? If you've walked from, you know, the average time of a kid walking, yeah? You don't need to think about walking or standing up, it just happens, it's a subconscious decision. That's what you've got to do with the drawing, yeah? You've got to really think and make that subconsciously. Right, okay, let's think about this, Mark. I'm going to read this. Uh, yeah, Mark. <laughs> okay. When playing very loud molar strokes, is the index finger in or out? Right, okay. I would definitely, definitely say out. Okay. But it's not really out, it's just resting, yeah? So the motion's coming from here, yeah? Um, if you watch Jim Chapin, um, Jim Chapin obviously died, I don't think it was last year or a year before, perhaps, yeah? He actually played some strokes from back here, yeah? Yeah, he actually played the more power, the, the further back on the hand you get, the more powerful it becomes, okay? So definitely, definitely not under there, yeah? Definitely loose and out and nice, okay? So that's the first part. Also, does this affect the natural gap between the index, which should be there? No, it doesn't. In, in answer to your question, Matt, somebody once tried to teach me years ago, that this gap here should be closed, okay? Yeah, and I studied with this guy because I didn't know any 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 better, really. Yeah, okay. And uh, it, it's quite good now because um, I have a number. I mean, he's about thirty or forty miles away from me. Um, I have a number of students that live very close to him who drive to me for lessons. I have a number of students that drive straight past him for lessons. Yeah, and for me, the guy shouldn't be teaching at all because it's completely wrong. Yeah. That, if, you, if I come back to the camera again, Mark, yeah, and we look, just wait for it to catch up here so I can see that I've got it in the right place. Okay? <coughs> okay? That's the, this is the gap that Mark's talking about here. Yeah? Okay? So, if, you're, if your index fingers, that's, that, that's the motion there. Okay? That's the motion. Yeah? Okay? That's the motion that we're looking for. Yeah? If you put that slight pinch back under, this gap's still there, yeah? This, the aim is to keep this muscle here really, really relaxed, okay? So whether that's under there, I mean, even if you do, you know, play like that, that gap's still there, yeah? You don't want to fall into this, yeah? But the gap is still there, okay? So hopefully, Mark, let me know that's answered your question because we're just about, we're just about going to wrap up. Um, so hopefully, um, Hopefully you've all got something out of it. Okay. Hopefully you've all got let me double check these uh, these last couple of questions, see if there's any more. Okay. So hopefully you've all got something out of it. Um, please, you know, keep you know you can ask me any more questions if you want. That's fine. You can still mail them through there, or you can you can stick them up on the Facebook page, um, which there's a link to on the site anyway. <laughs> um, I'm hoping that this is working now better because, you know, we've got. It's completely not only free. You're going to get something out of it to use in your students, to use wherever you want. Yeah, let us know your progress. If you want to um, mail me, if you film any videos, if you're doing the things that we're doing in the lessons, then there's a place on the site for those that I can send you to, and you can upload your videos to there. We can link them once they're up. If you send me a link to them, I can link them and put them in there as the view, as the sort of viewers videos. Um, so that way, then, this, as I say, there's these guys from all over the world now. Um, I was just looking before we came on from, we, we didn't do one uh, in December because we're rewriting the site, yeah, but there's, there's all the nationalities of flags, there's America, there's France, there's 
Ireland, this is all over the UK. Um, it, 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 it's, fan, it's, it's, you know, it's fantastic where people are. So if you want to get your plane up, yeah, then by all means, you know, send that link and we'll put it in there and we'll, we'll put it into the uh, into the archive bit so everybody can see it. Yeah. Okay. Um, one final one then, Mark. Uh, do you have any particular exercises keeping the index finger off or in case of revisiting previous rudimental techniques? Yeah, okay. All I would say to you on that one is go back and look at maybe your single strokes. Um, we're keeping them really, really loose. Yeah. It will feel a bit weird and you'll end up throwing sticks around. Yeah, okay. But just go back and look at that. Yeah. Maybe singles, doubles up here. Just a nice steady tempo. How are those? Gradually, you know, as, as, you, as you pick up the speed. Start to, start to think about, okay, how do I take this to the next level? So there, I'm going to have a little pinch on the front of the stick. And I've got that now, and I've got, oh, yeah, I've got a nice little motion. This, and, it, and it goes down to, you know, fingers. Yeah, and, and everything in between that, yeah? So really, you know, you guys, I think, most of you, by the looks of things, are quite, you know, quite advanced players already. Yeah, it it comes down to you really thinking about it. Just it's not necessarily me saying to you, know, do this, do that, do the other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, do this, do that, do the other. It's a case of you guys really paying attention to what you're doing and how you're doing it, and then imparting that to you know your students or to or to you know on that on that getting that nice sound out of that record or whatever it is, yeah. Um, that's the way to really kind of to kind of look at it, yeah. Okay. Um, thanks for that, man. That's great. Um, first time you've tried it, and you've recommended it to more uh, to some of your pupils, which is brilliant. Mate. This is exactly what it's there for. Um, and as I say, at the moment, this is. It's going to stay like this, guys. It's going to stay completely and utterly free. Yeah. Okay. Um, it obviously costs me quite a lot of money to get this going, so I'm going to try and you know recoup that from somewhere else. Yeah. But all I all I really want you guys to do to to, be, to enable us to keep this going is to just spread the word if you can. Uh, I'd like to see some, you know, hopefully later on maybe some little things on on your on your Facebook pages or on on the Raw Studio site or sharing it or on Twitter or. or forums and things maybe on you know if anybody's on the Mike Dolby forum that you've, you've had this lesson and it just so we can just build the momentum and keep it going so it's really really worthwhile uh, the money's kind of irrelevant um, but you know just keep it just keep it building for me if you can spread the word um, I'm hoping to get out and about um, throughout this year uh, doing some master classes and some clinics and things around and about so you know if, if any of you guys are teachers and things and you want to put on a day of private lessons um, then you know we can tie that into the into the thing, we can I can come down or come up on travel to you. We can do a full day, um, you know, make it worthwhile for both of us, um, and do it that way. So, uh, so yeah, please spread the words. Hopefully, I'm just going to check one final time. We've got no more questions. No, that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Next, the schedules on the site, all the archives are on the site. I'm working through the backlog of them. Yeah, there's there's probably about another ten that need to go up there, and they take a, a good couple of hours or so to edit each. So it's just finding the time to do that. Um, but I will get that done. Um, the archives are going to be in there. Keep checking back, keep looking at stuff, spread the word for me, and I will see you hopefully all next week. Thanks, guys. Take care.